Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That is a great crowd. Look at those people up there. I can't even see them. There are so many people. It's a beautiful place. Well, thank you very much, and a very big hello to a place where we've done very well, Sioux Falls. Thank you very much, Sioux Falls. And thank you also to this incredible, incredible state. It's been very good for us, and we have some uh, truly great Americans with us, as you know, and one of the greatest is Dr. Ben Carson. He's been my friend, and Candy. Candy is incredible. I think Candy keeps him that, Greg, you helped, you helped him so much. I think without Candy, he'd be nothing, okay? You want to know that too. He'd be nothing like all of us, right? Candy, thank you very much. And uh, what a great relationship and what a great man you are, Ben. Thank you very much. We appreciate it very much. <laughs> Additionally, on this Sunday afternoon, I'm delighted to announce the endorsements. And these are very important to me because I have such respect for people that do this. They are the most respected people of more than 100 great Iowa faith leaders. So I want to thank you, and you're in the room, and I just want to give you applause because you, the job you do is incredible. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's a great honor. I won't disappoint you. And thank you for all of your tremendous support. Very special thanks to Senior Pastor Bill Clays with Bill. Bill Clays. Bill, thank you very much with your family. Thank you very much. Look, Trump 20. Thank you, Bill. Uh, you point that up in that direction. We're definitely going to make it, right? Thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. And Pastor Joseph Hall. Pastor, where is Pastor? Pastor, thank you very much. Appreciate it very much, Pastor. Thank you. Great honor. Let me also recognize a man who has been really something special, our acting attorney general. To me, he wasn't acting. He was always there. He was always there. Matt Whitaker. Matt Whitaker. He's been there from day one. And, you know, we have a very special person with us who endorsed me uh, a little while ago. A very big politician. I don't know. You guys better get working because she's going places. The Iowa Attorney General, Brenna Bird. Thank you, Brenna, very much. She's going places, fellas. You better get working out there. Brenna, thank you very much. Great honor. It was uh, when you did it a couple of weeks ago, it got all over the country. I don't know. You're doing pretty well because that was a big one. So we need a new. We definitely. She, she said we need a new president. We cannot do worse than what we have. We cannot do worse. We cannot do worse. It's horrible what's happening. State Senators, Brad Zahn. Now, Brad was my first endorsement in the country. Not Iowa, in the country. Where's Brad? He's got to be. He always gives himself the worst seat, the worst location. A self-effacing man. I call him the Marlboro man. Not that he should be smoking. Oh, here he is. Come here. Come here. He usually gives himself the worst today. He has the best location. Come here. Thank you. Yeah. Say something, please. Well, as I said earlier, I am very, very excited and honored to be the first person in the United States to endorse the best president of my lifetime, the next president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. So, Sioux City, let me ask you, how many people come... How many people come from Sioux City? How many people? Huh? How many? Who doesn't come from Sioux City? Where the hell do you come from? Well, it's, it's great. It's great. And Brad has been so fantastic. And also, if I might, Lynn Evans. Where's Lynn? Lynn? Thank you, Lynn. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm very proud to receive the endorsements of two people that are also here with us. State Senators Kevin Ulans. Where is Kevin? Right, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. 
And I think Kevin has something very important to go to, and he wants to stay here. But I, you are totally, you go ahead, because you're going to hear me speaking a lot over the next little while. But we're going to take this state. But Kevin, I very much appreciate it and uh, the endorsement. And Jeff Taylor. Jeff, thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. Two very respected people. We have a lot of endorsements, but two very respected people. And your Attorney General, that's been so incredible. So thank you all very much. The whole room I want to thank. We're just 78 days away from Iowa's first in the nation caucuses. I kept you first in the nation. I kept you first in the nation. On Monday, January 15th, we're going to win the Iowa caucuses. So that's your big day to remember, January 15th. But your bigger time is November. We have to really go to town because uh, you know they cheat. You know that, right? And you know how you beat cheaters? You have to swamp them. You have to swamp them. Not drain the swamp. In this case, you have to build the swamp. Okay, we'll build one. But you have to swamp them, and uh, we will. I think we're going to. We're seeing numbers that we've never seen before, ever. But we're going to crush crooked Joe Biden next November. We're going to make America great again. We're going to put America first. Under Crooked Joe, our borders have been demolished. Drugs and criminals are pouring in. Our economy is a mess. Our schools are in shambles. Our justice system is corrupt. We have a corrupt justice system. Who would have believed? Our Constitution, he said, I would. <laughs> Did they give you a hard time, too? Did they give you a hard time? Our Constitution is being ripped to shreds. Israel is under attack. And now we have terrorist sympathizers chanting their jihad slogans on our streets, all over our streets. With your vote, we will defend our country. We will defend our Judeo-Christian values, and we will defend Western civilization. And that's what we've got to do. Right? That's what we've got to do. If I were president, the attack on Israel would have never happened. Wouldn't have happened. You know, we had Iran in a very good place. They were broke. <laughs> that's a good place. Now they're rich. Ukraine would never have happened. It would have never, ever happened. Putin would never have done it. Inflation would never have happened. That was started with stupid energy problem. You know, they just said, let's not, let's not drill. Let's not, uh, let's go to more of the things that don't work. And uh, energy went up at a level that you will soon see again, by the way. You're going to see it again. I see that in California. They just hit $8.15 a gallon. That's not good. And you'll be following. You'll be following, unfortunately. But we're going to get it done. You know, we were at $1.87. Think of that, Ben. $1.87 a gallon. That's when I told you I was going to make a great deal with China, a great deal with Canada and Mexico. I said, go out, buy more land and bigger tractors. Do you remember that? I said, bigger tractors and more land. But most embarrassing is the... Uh, Inept withdrawal. I was getting out of Afghanistan. 21 years was a long time, but we were getting out with dignity, honor. You know, I called up the head of the Taliban, and I said, uh, Abdul, don't ever, don't ever do what you're doing, Abdul, because he was, he was, uh, they were knocking him off left and right. They were shooting, killing a lot of people, especially under Obama. They were killing them, the snipers. And I spoke to him, the fake news media. I don't know, I hope they the fake news media, they weren't thrilled. They weren't exactly thrilled. But uh, the fake news went out, and they were very upset that I called him. I said, well, who else would I call? He's the leader of the Taliban. He's the one that's killing our people and killing a lot of people. Uh, I tell the story, Jesse James, who was a great bank robber, right? Jesse James. I said, Jesse, why do you always rob banks? He said, because that's where the money is, right? That's where the money is. You stupid person to ask a question like that. I robbed banks because that's where the money is. Well, I dealt with the Taliban and the head of the Taliban because that's where the killing was. And we went 18 months after that, not one soldier even shot at. And we were losing them left and right. And we would have had a, a withdrawal that would have been very nice, and we would have kept the big air base. You know, we had an air base, one of the biggest in the world, and not because of Afghanistan, but because it's one hour away from where China makes their nuclear weapons. It uh, would have been nice to keep it called Bagram, and we would have kept that. I was planning to stay there. They gave it up. They ran out night, 
I mean, they took the military out first before they took out anything. They didn't take the American citizens, many of whom are still there now. A lot of people don't know that. They cannot be enjoyable right now. They can't get out. But they took the military out first. Then they tried to take the citizens and the military equipment. We left $85 billion worth of equipment behind. Think of it. How stupid are these people? You know, I, I hate to use that word, but it's just a very accurate word. How stupid are they? How stupid? And they left all that equipment behind. And now Afghanistan is the second or third largest seller of military equipment in the world. They're selling our equipment that we left behind because they don't need anywhere near. They need about 3% of it. 700,000 rifles and guns, 70,000 trucks and cars, many of them armor-plated, costing millions of dollars to build, airplanes, tanks, goggles, you know, the goggles. They weren't, you know, they're great fighters, but they never fought at night because they couldn't see at night. Now they can fight at night because we left them the best goggles, brand new, never taken out of the box, and better than what we have. Thousands and thousands of goggles. People say, oh, that's not so good. Well, it is. Those are very expensive. Those are treasures. We gave them everything, and what we got is nothing but embarrassment. The most embarrassing moment, in, the, in my opinion, the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, and I think that's one of the reasons that Putin said, hey, if these people are so inept to allow a thing like that to happen, let's go and try and take Ukraine right now. And I think it opened the world to some very bad facts. But the truth is, you know, we defeated the... We defeated ISIS 100 percent. Ben was with me 100 percent of the ISIS caliphate. And we did it in four weeks. You know, we did that in four weeks, four weeks. And uh, we knocked out 100 percent of that. And it was an honor to do it. We were told that we couldn't do it for four years. It would take four years at least and maybe not be able to do it. We did it in four weeks. We have unbelievable military. And uh, that was when I went over to Iraq. Do you remember that? I spoke to some incredible people, incredible people over there. And they said, sir, I think we can do it in four weeks. You have time left over. And uh, we had unbelievable. We, our military is, is great, but we did things that nobody thought we could do. We would not have an open border where countries are emptying out their prisons and their mental institutions. They say, please don't use this term, sir. Insane asylums. That's silence of the lambs, right? <laughs> Hannibal Lecter. Did anybody ever hear of Hannibal Lecter? The young people didn't. The young ones didn't. They don't want to hear about Hannibal. We don't want, but that's, uh, they said it's a very tough term. I said, well, it's an accurate. They're emptying out insane asylums. They're emptying out their mental institutions. They're emptying out their prisons and jails. And terrorists are pouring into our country. In record numbers, the terrorists are coming in. You know, they show a graph on one of the networks today that uh, under Trump, zero in 2019. They're showing 2019, 2020, 2020. Zero terrorists, think of that, came in. And then they have, and then the march begins. Then the march begins. They go to 2020, 2021, and now it's numbers that we've never even seen before. And what can be good about that? You know, whether you're liberal, conservative, common sense, it doesn't matter. I like to say I'm common sense. They say, what are you? You're very conservative. I say, well, I'm basically common sense. The people in this room are common sense. You don't have to say conservative. Somebody said, would say, oh, he gave up being a conservative. No, I'm conservative. We're common sense. We don't want open borders. We want voter ID. We want paper ballots. We want, we want same day voting. We want schools that work well and can teach your kids how to read and write and arithmetic. We want, we want all, we want a strong military. We want low taxes, right? We want low taxes. We want very little regulation. I gave you the greatest tax cut in the history of the country. We gave you the biggest regulation cut. That's why we had the best economy in the history of America. We had the best economy in the history of our country. And we'll do it again. I think we could do it quickly. Look, they really loused it up with energy. Energy was a disaster. We will say the words, drill, baby, drill. We'll be drilling very quickly. Okay?
So those big tractors that you bought that take a little more fuel, you'll be very happy in a very short period of time. But uh, you're going to be very happy. But we did great. And, you know, they're just running off the fumes of what we did. Uh, I was very disrespectful to Iowa. I'd like to apologize because I go around saying, of course we're going to win Iowa. And my people say, you cannot assume that to this extent. Well, we are, I think we're up by 47 points or something. So we so we should. But forgetting that. But Ben, they said, sir, it would be nice if you didn't say that because you can't just assume, you know, people may get upset. I said, wait a minute. I got Iowa and the farm states, Nebraska, Wisconsin, and others. I got, I got farmers $28 billion from China. I said, there's no way that I was voting against Trump. There's nothing. You guys were opening up those checks. You say, where the hell did that come from? That came from Trump. I got it from China. Do you think Biden's going to get 28 billion from China? China gets, China pays Biden directly. Okay? We're just trying to find out how much. Most corrupt president we've ever had by far. And the most incompetent. Most incompetent. And I never used to talk that way. You know, it's true. But you wouldn't say that because I, I respect the office too much. But now I, I hit them differently than I would because they did something to me that's never been done before. They indicted me because I protested a crooked election. They indicted me. They go after people for years. Do you notice they never go after people that rigged the election? They go after people that are complaining about the rigging. Anybody get see? Did anybody see anybody with all the things and all the facts we have? And you'll be seeing them come out because we never forget. You know, history, you have to remember, history is a very important word. But they indicted me once, twice, three, four. I think they stopped. I heard they were going to do a couple of more. But they said, don't do any more because my poll numbers have shot up. Because people get it, right? People get it. People get it. Did anybody ever hear, he's a very nice fellow, Al Capone. Did you ever hear of Al Capone? Scarface. He had a scar that went from here to here, and he didn't get that scar by playing tiddlywinks, right? Al Capone. Alphonse Capone. If you smiled at him in the wrong way, he'd kill you. He was only indicted one time. I got four. I wonder if my father and mother are proud of me. Mom did. Over nonsense, over nonsense, over stuff. That's incredible. Over stuff. Think of it. Over fighting an election. 2016 election, almost every congressman Democrat said, you're wrong. It was, they made up the Russia, Russia, Russia thing. Nothing happened to them. They did things that were so bad, so illegal. Nothing happens. When you look at what's going on in this country, we have two tiers of justice, and we're going to have it turned around very fast. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen like that. You know, they go after Christians. And I know you have fewer Catholics in this room than you would normally have in a lot of other states, but how about the Catholics? They're going after the Catholics. Like, what's going on with the Catholics? And they go after parents because they want their school boards to do a better job, and they go after parents. Parental, parental. Can you imagine? I'm, I'm defending parental approvals now. We want parental approvals of superintendents in schools, and we want our schools to work right. And they go after those people. They don't go after the people that cause the problems and cause the corruption, so it's crazy, but we're going to have it straightened out fast. For four straight years under the Trump administration, I kept America safe, I kept Israel safe, and I kept the world safe. There was none of this stuff going on. None of it. None of it was going on. Thank you very much. No, I mean, our country, seriously, you go back three years. Our country is not recognizable now. It's not even recognizable. You look at what's happened. Uh, bacon has gone up five times in like a year and a quarter. Five times I saw that this morning. Bacon. What's going on with bacon? Come on, let's get going. 
but it's gone up. Bacon, I think I'm not going to order bacon anymore for a little while, but we'll get it back down. But bacon has gone up so much, but food has gone up so much. Everything has gone up. Inflation has been a killer. You know, inflation's called a country buster because you can go back 200 years, 300 years. Countries that have gone out of business, Ben, have been... Anybody that had inflation, Germany, years ago, inflation, it destroyed the country. And we have it worse than most of these countries. And then they say it's coming down to 4 or 5%, but they don't talk about the fact that you're up here. We got to get the prices back down. We got to get it back down. We're going to. We're going to be able. And it starts to a large extent with energy. It starts, you know, when your fuel comes down, other things happen. But now it's gotten so all pervasive with the food. And I mean, every everything is now huge, hugely uh, what's happened with inflation, hugely higher. But all over the planet, our enemies knew that one thing with us, that if you try to kill our citizens, we will kill you. We will kill you. And I hate to say that in front of the hundred great pastors and faith leaders and everybody that endorsed. We have so many great people. But that's the way we're going to keep our country safe. Which, uh, we have no choice. So faith leaders, I think they agree because they're smart and they understand. And we have to have, thank you, I have one of the hundred that definitely agrees. So that's good. There they are. They're going. That's good. But now we have to keep our country safe. And we do it not because we want to start wars. We do it because we want to stop wars. We want to prevent wars from happening. Remember Hillary? She said, he'll cause, he'll cause a war. He'll cause a war. They'll look at him. The way he talks, he'll cause a war. I say, no, the way I talk, I'll stop wars. I'm the only president in 72 years that didn't start a war. The only one. No, we didn't stop, but we finished wars. We finished ISIS and a lot of others. We got out of Syria. We got out of Iraq. Remember, I used to say a long time ago, before I did this stuff, before I was a politician, I hate to say that because I can't imagine myself being a politician. It cost me a couple of billion dollars to be a politician. Everyone else makes... They make, I said, no, we can't do that. I could have made a fortune. The countries are coming. We'd like to build a job and we'd like to have you involved. Billions, I say, I'm tell my kids, sorry kids, we can't do it. I'm president. I respected the office. And then I get out and I see the stuff that Biden's been doing and I say, well, I did it the right way. <laughs> you know, the money, the money. And my kids say, Dad, could we build a job here or there or in the Middle East? Certain countries, they had a lot of money and they'd love to build a nice Trump job. No, kids, you can't do that. It's a conflict. I didn't do that. So I was willing. And, of course, then they made it uh, much worse with legal fees. I have $100 million worth of legal fees. Worth, and they're doing good. At least I have good lawyers. Because you could spend $100 million have lousy lawyers, too. That happens. <laughs> but, no, I said, I said right from the beginning, I told Ben... And Candy, a long time ago, I said, you know, it's uh, it's incredible. As soon as you win, they start coming to you about they want to do this. And I told my kids that you can't do that. We can't do that. Too much respect for the office. And uh, I told you, you know, I had too much respect for the office to hit Joe Biden, where I say he's the most incompetent president, most corrupt president, the worst president we've ever had. Those are tough words, and I would never have done that until they did something that's never been done. They indicted a former president. They'd never do that. And the only reason they indicted me is that we're leading him in the polls. We're killing them. How about I have one judge in Washington, D.C., who put my trial date the day before Super Tuesday, okay? And it's a trial based on nothing. And they say, the day before Super Tuesday, I have a trial. But that wasn't political, was it? They could have put it anywhere for years and years. They decided to put, because, you know, this stuff could have been brought years ago. They just did this after I announced I'm running. I announced I'm running. All of a sudden, I get, if I weren't running, or if I was in fourth or fifth place, or, you know, like a lot of people, uh, none of this would happen. But when you're leading, these are cheaters. These, that's a form of cheating. It's a big form. And it's only used in third world countries, banana republics. They do it, you know. I said, 
Has this ever been done before? Not in our country, but it has been done a lot in third world countries. And sometimes they call them banana republics. But they brought our country to a new level. And But that allows, think of this, that allows us to do it to Biden when he gets out. And that, uh, that would be very easy. But I don't want to do it. You know, once you, once you do that, you've set yourself on a very downward, very bad path. Very bad path. But a thing like this has never happened before. And uh, it is true. I heard two more were coming and they said, don't do it. No, no. This is killing us. They didn't want it to. Because every time I go up, seven points, eight points, right? They did the shirt, right? The mug shot. That shirt is selling like millions and millions of shirts. The mug shot. You believe it? I don't know. And they only took one. They said, did you pose for that? How many times? It was only one. They don't want to waste a lot of... It was no game, sir. And he was very good, Sheriff. In Georgia. Very good. He said, sir, are you ready? Yeah. And he said, I said, wait a minute, let me... And then, boom, one shot. It wasn't like I had a choice of 15 to choose from. Normally, you would get... There it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Thank you. Now you've got a lot of them. I see a lot of them. To every American who is petrified that Joe Biden's catastrophic weakness will bring our country to ruin, I make you this promise. As your president, I will restore peace through strength. And yes, I will prevent World War III. We are very close to World War III, and we will prevent it. I know all the players. I know the players, I know the good ones, the bad ones, the weak ones. You know, there's a very powerful player, Viktor Orban. Did anybody ever hear of Viktor Orban? He's the head of Hungary. Hungary fronts on both Ukraine and Russia. And they went to him about two weeks ago. They said, what would you recommend that you he's interviewed? A very powerful man. Uh, his country runs incredibly well. He doesn't allow illegals into his country. He put barbed wire fences all over. He has soldiers every 10 yards. He's got a soldier standing. Nobody came in. And he said he doesn't want his country blown up or destroyed. I mean, you know, it sounds. But he's a very smart, very respected person, very tough guy. They said, what would you do? I would like to know. This is during an interview. What would you do to tell President Biden? What can he do to make things better? Because the whole world is blowing up. He said, I'd tell him to do Two things. Number one is resign, and number two is put Trump in charge again, because under Trump, for four years, we had world peace. And he's the only one that's going to be able to do it. So that was very nice. That was very nice. It's true. We had total peace four years. You know, I talk, uh, I was with a group yesterday, a great group in Nevada, and we had a fantastic evening, actually. A very religious group also, very religious people, great people. And we were talking about different things. And I said to them, our security was so incredible. I have the Trump ban, you know, the Trump travel ban. Everybody killed me on that, the Trump travel ban. Because it sounds a little nasty, but no, I don't want people coming in from certain countries where it's so bad and they're blowing each other up and they're killing each other and they want to now come and they want to teach us how their country runs. We don't need that. We don't want to be taught. So we had the Trump travel ban. But I said, you know, the one thing that's nice about not being in, I never talked about the fact that we had no trouble with terrorism for four years. Think of it. We didn't have buildings knocked down. We didn't have the World Trade Center. We didn't have any of that. We didn't have anything. And Look what happened after I get out. But we had nothing happening, and we had a very strong, we were very tough on letting people into our country. We had the strongest border in history. We built 500 miles of wall, which was nobody's ever seen. We're going to add another 200, and they could have put it up in three weeks, and they decided to sell it for five cents on the dollar, if you can believe it. But we never had a problem, and I couldn't say it when I was there, because I didn't want to be there, Ben, and say... We've never had a problem. Then the following day, we have a problem. That doesn't work. But now, the four years is up, and I say, we didn't have a problem. That's because we ran it tough, and we ran it smart, and people could come into our country, but they had to come in legally. We had the lowest numbers of illegals coming into our country in history, and we'll get that back again. You know, all Biden had to do is go to the beach, like he does all the time anyway. If he went to the beach, 
You know, he's got a consultant, and the consultant somehow thinks he looks good on the beach. I don't think so. He can barely lift the chair. You know that chair? They weigh about six ounces, right? They're meant for old people that have lost a lot of strength. No, that chair weighs, it's very, you know, very light. See that beautiful young person right there, right next to our attorney general? Could lift that chair with no problem. You know that? You could lift it. But he has a problem. Do you ever see him? He's dragging the chair. And he can't get the feet through the sand. And he's in the beach. Well, if he did that, instead of stopping everything we had, stay in Mexico. Remember, remain in Mexico. You had to remain. You think that was easy to get from Mexico? No. Uh, all of the different things that we had. I went to Mexico. I said, we need 28,000 soldiers free of charge. They laughed at me. They said, you have to be kidding. I said, no, we want 28,000 soldiers because you're sending people up through these caravans, a name we came up with. We're good at names. But we came up with, and thousands of people were in these caravans. I said, nope, we want soldiers. We want, and they laughed and they said, we're not going to give it. And a woman at the State Department, very good, she was there for 20, 25 years. She said, sir, we've been asking for things like this for years. They're not going to give it. I said, yes, they will, 100%. And so I dealt with the head of one of the top guys at Mexico, a good guy, handsome, tall, strong guy. I said, listen, we're going to need 28,000 soldiers. We want to have a remain in Mexico policy so everyone remains in Mexico. They don't come into our country anymore. When catch and release, we want to release them, but we're going to release them in your country, not in our country. And the medical, as you know, title, we're going to leave that the way it is. We want title. We want to make sure that people that have infectious diseases and all the problems that they have, we don't want them in our country right now. I'm sorry. We don't want to be mean but we don't want them in our country we can't do that sir I said yes you will you'll do it he said no we won't i said how much you want to bet you'll do it i'm talking to the guy i'm like he said uh, sir we won't be able to Twenty-eight thousand soldiers free of charge i'm not going to pay for the soldiers he said we won't do it i said okay ready here's a story i have before me a piece of paper i'm going to sign that paper and when i sign it that means on monday this was a friday evening on monday morning at seven o'clock Every single car, you know, they sold 32,000, 32 percent of our car industry, intelligently stole. I mean, I got to hand it to him. I really like the president of Mexico, by the way. I do like him. He's a socialist, but as I say, can't have everything. But he's great. He's a great guy, actually. Great guy. And I said, you got to sign this because what we're going to do is on Monday morning at 7, Ben Carson was with me. Monday morning at 7 o'clock in the morning, every single car and every single product that comes into the United States from Mexico, which is massive, is going to be taxed at 25 percent. And some people would call it a tariff, but it's going to be taxed or tariff, you call it whatever you want, it means very similar things, we don't have to go into the little tiny differences, but we're going to tax you slash tariff you at 25%. Sir, I'd like to make a phone call. So I said, good, please make a quick calls up. The president comes back. Sir, it would be our great honor to provide you with 28,000 soldiers. I said, free of charge. He said, free of charge. So with all those losers out there that say, Trump never got the, you remember I used to say Mexico will pay for the piece of the wall. I'll say, What's going to happen with their fight? I said, the wall gets higher. We all had a lot of fun. But I said, Mexico will pay for a piece of the wall. Well, there was no legal instrument to do that. But I got much more money because I got them to pay for 28,000 soldiers that guarded our border for years. And our numbers are the best numbers in the history of our country. And uh, honestly, they were great. But, you know, they say you can't do this, you can't do that. It was sort of a funny because here's this guy that I'm negotiating. He says, we'll never do that. I says, yes, you will, 100 percent to 100 He's looking at me like, is there something wrong with this guy? He says, he then five minutes later, he said, we would uh, be honored. We would be honored to allow you. We have many things like that. We had the same thing in France. You know why I'm, we could go a little longer today? Because it's a Sunday. We're allowed to do this. God said we can take some extra time because it's Sunday. The football games aren't any good today. Right? Right? We'll do this. But you know, in France, I love to go off the teleprompter because it's so much more interesting. Isn't it? Plus, you never know what's going to come out. So you say, ah. 
with a teleprompter, you can't make a mistake. The only one that can't do a teleprompter is Biden, because he can't. He can't read the tele. He can't read the teleprompter. He can't do anything. But in France, the same thing. They were going to tax American companies very substantially. I went to Secretary of Commerce, and I went to different people, Treasury. I went to a lot of people, said, no, you call them up, tell them we're not going to do that. We're not going to allow that to happen. Uh, they're not going to tax our companies. They said, uh, yes, they are. They're going to do it, sir. I said, well, here's, you give them one week's notice. They're not going to do it. They came back. They said, no, they're going to do it. I call up Emmanuel Macron. Has anyone ever heard? He's the head of France. He's a good guy, but he's for France. You know, he's for France. He says, make France great again. I say, make America great again. You know, it's very simple. He's for France first. I'm for America first. It's very simple. So I call him up, I say, Emmanuel, I understand you're going to tax a couple. Oh, yes, Donald. Oh, yes, we will be doing that. The legislation has passed, and I'll be signing. I said, do you think it's fair that you're taxing American companies but not other companies? No, Donald, oh, yes, it will be something we will do. I say, you're not going to do it. No, but we have to. It's too late. The legislation has passed. I will be signing it very shortly. I said, here's the story, Emmanuel. If you do that, every bottle of wine and champagne that shipped in from France to the United States of America is going to have a 100% tariff placed on it. And he says, no, 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 that would not be fair. I said, oh, well, it's not fair for you to tax our companies because, you know, I got to protect our companies. Not fair. He said, may I call you back in five minutes? I said, please. Calls me back in three minutes. Uh, Donald, we've decided to get rid of that tax. So that was the end of that. That was the end of that. That was the end of that. No tax. Let me give you the bad news. Biden's going to allow it to happen. That's the bad news. But don't worry. In a year, I'll get it off again. Yeah, he's going to let it happen. They don't even know it's happening. They don't even know it's happening. They don't know what's going on. Their countries, our country is being sold down the tubes. As I proposed long before Ron DeSanctimonious tried to steal the idea and pass it on as his own, I will cancel the student visas of terrorist sympathizers on college campuses. You know, you know, Ron DeSanctimonious, first of all, he's getting absolutely clobbered in the polls. And in your state, I think he's now number three. He's like, you know what I, the expression I said, he's like a wounded bird falling from the sky. So there he is, it's Ron DeSanctimonious. He's falling, falling beautifully from the sky. It's a beautiful thing to watch because I got him elected. And when you get somebody elected, they don't go, like our great attorney general, she cannot, I didn't get her elected. She was wonderful, I endorsed her, I helped her, but she would have done well, I think she would have done well, and she, I think she would have won. And many people I endorse it. Ron was dead. He had no chance. He was down real low. And he came to me, tears in his eyes, that he needed help because he was running against, he was running against a man, the secretary, which a very big thing in Florida. They like me too for this reason, but very big thing, secretary of agriculture. Adam Putnam is his name. Do you think Biden could remember all the stuff that I remember? I don't think so. He'd say, let's see, what the hell was his name? He wouldn't tell the story because he wouldn't know to tell the story. But Adam Putnam, and Adam Putnam had like a 40-point lead or something. The election was fairly soon. And uh, this was the primary. And I said, you know, Ron, here's the problem. Uh, if George Washington and Abraham Lincoln came back from the dead and they decided to endorse you. I don't think it would help you so far. You're gone. No, no, no. They love you in Florida. They love you. If you endorse me, I think I could win. I said, well, let's give it a shot. You know why? Because with the impeachment hoax number one and impeachment hoax number two, he was one of 150 different congressmen who actually said something nice. He was no Jim Jordan. He was no Mike Johnson, who's going to be great, by the way. But but he, he, he did stick up for me a little bit, you know, he did. He wanted to get on television to get a little name recognition, so he got up. And uh, I said, uh, let's give it a shot. I endorsed him. He went like a rocket ship. 
He went like a rocket ship. So he was uh, going to lose by a lot, and he ended up uh, winning. And then we got him past the crackhead. You remember the crackhead? But he wasn't a crackhead. He was supposed to be the hottest politician in the entire party. He was a handsome guy. He was going to run and run, said, I can't win. I don't think I can win against this guy. And I said, yes, you're going to win. I did two or three rallies for him. Remember, big, big, beautiful rallies. Thousands of people, Ben Carson, came to one or two of them. And we ended up having a cut. And I said, you're going to win. He said, I don't think so. And he ended up winning. And then four years later, they said, Mr. Governor, will you run against the president? And he said, I have no comment. No comment means he's going to run, right? Doesn't that mean that? You know, like this group. That's a smart group of people that I know. You know, these are the, these are the uh, front row Joes, right? Aren't you? Go stand up. These guys, these are incredible people. They've seen so many. They usually go to the rallies. You know, we'll be doing the rallies when the weather gets a little warmer. And it's even a little bit early, but we'll be doing the rallies. Actually, you know, honestly, when you're like 60 points up, <laughs> what the hell do we have to do a rally for this? <laughs> Let's just keep chugging along, right? But thank you very much. I've been to like 70 of them. I think. How many have you been to? How many have you been to? Yeah. 68? 42. Well, that's great. Well, we appreciate it. Front Row Joes, they call them. That's great. Great. Thank you, darling. Thank you. So uh, I hit him very hard. They said, don't hit him, sir. He's a Republican. I said, so what? I don't care if he's a Republican. The guy's going to run against me. Can you believe we hit him hard? And by the time he got to it, and I actually think he's very seriously wounded for 28 also, but he's gone down. Remember one thing. If you run for politics, you got to have a little personality, too. you got to have a little personality. And he was just so we can say, because we're in this territory, he was totally against ethanol, totally. He was viciously against it. And I heard last week he came out in favor of ethanol. One thing about a politician, if they're against something and then they come out because they're in the middle of an election, they always go to where they first came from. That means if he's against ethanol, that means he's against ethanol. He will kill ethanol. There's no question about it. But we're beating him really badly, and we have... Uh, few people that, I don't know, they're not doing well. I don't want to speak badly about everybody because they're not doing well. Just speak badly about the one that's second, but I think he's going to be third from what I understand pretty soon. To all of the resident aliens who joined in the pro-jihadist protests all over this country, all over the world, this month, come 2025, you will find that we will deport you because these are people that are against our country. I mean, I saw it yesterday. They're screaming death to America, death to Israel, death to America, death to America. And then we, we're supposed to take care of them. You know, it's very, uh, I, I dealt with some of the people that we're fighting now, and they came over. We paid them $750 million a year, and I met with the head people. I don't want to go into it too much, but I met with the head people. And they couldn't have been nicer. They were really great. Then they went back into the Middle East and their respective territories. And they started screaming, death to America, death to America. I said, is that the same guy that I was with over the weekend? It was so nice. Yes, that's it. That's what their motto is, death to America. I said, how much do we pay them? $750 million. I said, cancel it immediately. We canceled it. If they say death to America... But they've been saying that for years, and no other president canceled it. And it's amazing uh, how how nice they were after that. They were not, uh, they wanted to be nice, and it sort of worked out. But uh, it's got to work out long term, not short term. That's a short term solution, not a long term solution. Instead of cuddling up to the killers in Iran, as Biden has done, it's horrible what he's done. We had them ready to make a deal. They had no money. They were ready to make a deal. I told China, if you buy their oil, you're not going to do business with the United States. I told the same thing to India. I told it to everybody. I said, you buy their oil, you can't deal with the United States. They make a lot of money in the United States. And Iran was not doing any. You know, when I took over, they had $80 billion in cash. When I left, because of a rigged election, when I left, what happened is they had no cash. They were broke. 
And when you're broke, you're not looking at terror. You're looking to get your country through a period of time. We would have had we would have had a deal done within, I say, two weeks after the election. And it would have been a great deal for everybody, including Iran. We would have they can't have a nuclear weapon. That's all. They can't have nuclear weapons. It's too too destructive, too powerful. They can't have it. And uh, Biden gets in. As of now, they have much more than $100 billion in cash. They have so much money, they're swimming in the money. But I will once again sanction them until their ability to fund terror is gone. They have to stop with this stuff. They have to stop. It's probably a natural instinct. It's no wonder that crooked Joe Biden and the far-left lunatics are desperate to stop us by weaponizing law enforcement for high-level election interference. You know, it's election interference. They say, if we can damage Trump enough, we're going to win the election because they can't win it on policy. They can't win it on results. Their results are horrible. I mean, I don't think we've ever, Madam Attorney General, have we ever been in a position where a country is so disrespected, laughed at, we're mocked? People, we've lost all our allies. We don't really have allies. Even Europe now, they're taking advantage of us at a level that nobody's ever seen. As an example, in Ukraine, so we're in for 150 billion. Now, you know that it's much more important for Europe than us, but we want to see people live, etc. But we're in for 150 billion, and Europe's in for 17 billion. If you add Europe up, if you add all the various countries, they're approximately the same size economy. So I say, why aren't they in for the same number or more? I mean, in theory, and more. So they should equalize. They should come up and they should equalize. They've got plenty, but I don't think anybody from the Biden administration's ever is. If you ask them, if I said to them, listen, we're in for a hundred billion more than you. You have to put up the next hundred billion. We have to equalize. Otherwise, we're not going to do it. They'll put up the money, but nobody ever asks them. Same thing with NATO. We were way over our heads in NATO. Many of the countries weren't paying. They were delinquent. Only eight of the 28 countries were current. We were way current. We were paying three, four times what we were supposed to. We were carrying it. And when I went in, I looked and I said, uh, you're going to have to all pay or we're not going to protect you any longer. And I remember the head of a country stood up and said, does that mean that if Russia attacks my country, you will not be there? That's right. That's what it means. I will not protect you. And the money came. The money came pouring in. And the head of Secretary General Stoltenberg, he said, I've never said anything like it. Obama came, made a speech and left. Bush came, made a speech and left. They never said anything. And NATO was dying. NATO was going to die. Now it's rich as hell because of what I did. Everybody paid up. I mean, they paid up or they're in the process. But billions and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars came pouring into NATO. And he said, I've never said, I don't know if he'd say it anymore, but I think he would. Uh, he would because I'm doing so well in the polls. <laughs> I think he would. That's, you know, that does have an impact, actually. But... Uh, I think you would, actually, but hundreds of billions of dollars came pouring into NATO, and that's the money they have. They have a lot of money now, but we have to do that. We have to say to on Ukraine, you got to pay up. Why are we 125, 130, maybe more than that, billion dollars, not million, billion dollars ahead of you? Why? And you're right next to it. We're an ocean away. We have a whole ocean in between us. In the Harris poll, we lead the primary field by more than 50 points just came out, with Trump at 61 and DeSanctimonious at 11. And Bird Brain is at 6. 6. Does anybody know who Bird Brain is? He said, hey, hey, you can have her. I will never run against our president. He's one of the greatest presidents we've ever had. I will not run against our president under any circumstances. Four months later, uh, I'd like to announce my candidacy. What kind of people are these? These politicians out there. What kind of people do you have here? Ben, you're not that way. Ben is not that way. Better not be that I'm not going to fight. But no, what kind of people are these? She's been, say, she's been proclaiming for so long that she's, she would never run. I was a great president. You know, I put her in charge of the United Nations. Now, I must say, within the confines of this room on a Sunday, um, one of the reasons I did it was I happened to love the lieutenant governor of South Carolina. And we moved him 
Henry McMaster, he's great. He's a great guy. So he became governor. So I liked it. I got two for the price of one. I moved her over there. She was fine. But the big thing is she said I'd never run, and then she announced that she's going to run. She said it many times. I will never run against our president. He was a great president. Then he goes, she goes, I'd like to announce my candidacy. So we hit her hard. But bird brain. I call her bird brain. Highly overrated. She's a very highly overrated person. But the sanctimonious is really over it. Did, did anybody ever see anybody fall? I think it's got to be one of the worst campaigns in history. He was supposed to be young. He's this, that. He's going to be the future of the party. After people see him make about three speeches, that's the end of him. In the latest Ipsos poll of the general election, we're demolishing crooked Joe Biden, 49 to 43. In the Washington Post, we're beating him by 11. Wasn't that a great one? Did you see it last week? Washington Post comes out that we're leading by nine. Then they had to correct that to 10. Then they had to correct it to 11 or something. But they said, this must be an outlier. This is an outlier. This could, they spend a million dollars in a poll and they're trying to say, the poll is wrong. It's got to be wrong. I think their poll is right. We got to get out and vote, and we got to make sure they don't cheat. Keep your eyes open, do what you have to do, but we got to make sure they don't cheat because they're going to try and cheat. It's the only way they can win. They have done such a bad job. We did great. You know, we did much better in 2020 than we did in 2016. We got millions and millions more votes, but they cheated like dogs. They used COVID to cheat, including with the legislatures. You know, they got. They didn't get approval from the legislatures and things. They did things. You had the 51 intelligence agents. Remember when they said the laptop from hell was from Russia? But they all knew it wasn't. You know, that was big, big cheating. A lot of cheating they did. And stuffing the boxes. You see that? You saw that with 2,000 mules, didn't you? 2,000 mules. You ever see? Try getting a copy of 2,000 mules. Try getting a copy. Somebody said, I'd like to get 2,000. They made it almost impossible to get a copy of 2,000 Mules. He did it. Dinesh did a great job on that. And uh, true, we're going to stop it. Yeah, it's a big, you're right, right. We're going to stop it because we're watching it now. We have the best teams of people in the country, and we're going to stop the cheating. Because if we don't stop the cheating, you're not going to have a country. If we don't stop the cheating, you're not going to have a country. So we're going to stop. We're going to stop the cheating. People aren't going to let it happen. They're not going to let it happen. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. That I can tell you. Every time the radical left, the Marxists, the communists, the fascists, Every time they indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor because I'm being indicted for you. And never forget, our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. It's very simple. Very simple. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. We're not going to let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me, they're after you. I just happen to be standing in their way, and we're going to keep standing right in their way. And you have to remember this. This is more than a campaign, what we have. This is a movement. This is a movement. There's never been anything like this in the history of our country. This is bigger than 2016. This is bigger than 2020, where we got millions more votes. I fully rebuilt the U.S. military, created Space Force, and I was the first president in decades who didn't start a war, right? We didn't start a war. Others started wars, stupid wars, stupid wars. I kept my promise, recognized Israel's eternal capital, and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem, became the capital. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. I've been talking about it for 72 years. I got it done in about 12 minutes. And I withdrew from the disastrous Iran nuclear deal. The problem is this administration didn't do anything with it. They didn't do anything with it. I ended the NAFTA disaster, the worst trade deal ever made, and replaced it with a brand new USMCA, the best trade deal 
ever made, they all say, a giant win for farmers and manufacturers, Mexico and Canada. I took on communist China like no administration in history, bringing in hundreds of billions of dollars pouring into our treasury. No other president got them to pay 10 cents. There's not 10 cents that ever came to the United States. And as I told you, I then gave our farmers out of that money that came in, those billions and billions, $28 billion, and a large part of it came right here to Iowa. I saved the farmers. I saved them. I kept my promise to fight for Iowa ethanol like no one has ever done before. I issued a rule declaring that E15 would be made available all year round and vastly increase the number of filing stations and filling stations by letting them use the existing pumps, which were actually better to replace the pumps would have cost millions and millions of dollars. And I said, nope, give it to the people. We left the old. I actually said, which are better, the old pumps or the new pumps? And they said, the old pumps are actually much better. And we know that because we know new equipment versus old. A lot of times the old stuff works better. Every Iowa farmer needs to know that Ron DeSanctimonious opposed my $28 billion in relief for the farmers. He didn't want it to go to farmers. And DeSanctis fought viciously to terminate the renewable fuel standards which will kill Iowa ethanol and demolish the economy of your state. It will have a big impact on your economy. Brad told me that. Brad knows. DeSanctis called his plan to annihilate Iowa farming industry. He said it was a no-brainer. He was okay with it. He didn't know this. He didn't know he'd be running. He also vowed to gut Medicare and Social Security and voted three times to raise the retirement age of Social Security. So remember that when you go to the polls. Unlike Ron DeSanctis, you know, it was interesting. You talk about branding. He went for an interview the other day, like on NBC. Branding, branding's very important. They said, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to have Governor Ron DeSantis with us. No, no, DeSantis, it's DeSantis. <laughs> then he actually tried to change his name, right, to DeSantis. He doesn't want DeSantis, he wants DeSantis. And I actually left him a message, never change your name in the middle of a campaign. Do we agree with it? <laughs> I will always, our Attorney General wouldn't change your name in the middle of a campaign. You'll never change your name, period. I will always protect Medicare and Social Security for our great seniors. Always, you can count on it. And I always have. I always have. And I will always be your ethanol champion in the White House. You're going to be in good shape on ethanol. When I get back into the Oval Office, and it's we, because we're going to the Oval Office, we're all going together, I will totally obliterate the deep state, and we will expose every bit of Biden corruption that they're trying to cover up which is massive, which is massive. There's never been corruption like that. Just last week, it was revealed that the FBI had over 40 confidential sources providing criminal information on the Biden family. But instead of investigating Crooked Joe, the deep state falsely accused the information as being that of foreign disinformation. Remember when they said Russia it came from Russia, his laptop. His laptop came from Russia. Remember the laptop? Yeah, the laptop came from uh, Russia. That's right, Russia. As president, I will be creating a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to shed sunlight on every dark and rotten corner of Washington, D.C., <laughs> starting with crooked Joe Biden. And now we can really do that because they've led the path. What they're doing is so bad to this country to stop the Marxists, prosecutors who release rapists and murderers while persecuting Republicans, conservatives, and people of faith like you. I will direct a completely overhauled DOJ to investigate every radical DA and AG in America for their illegal racist in reverse enforcement of the law. To protect our citizens from foreign threats, I will build a state-of-the-art missile defense shield. I want that so badly. You know, Israel has one, and it works. The technology, you know, Ronald Reagan wanted it, but we really didn't have technology then, and we didn't have technology that worked. Now we have incredible technology. I want a shield over our country so that if some lunatic wants to take a shot at us, at least we have a hell of a chance of coming out okay before we obliterate them.
I will end Joe Biden's inflation disaster immediately, and we will quickly rebuild the greatest economy in the history of the world. We're going to go very quickly. While Joe Biden and the radical left Democrats want to massively raise your taxes, you know, they want to raise your taxes about four times and take away the Trump tax cuts, which, as you know, they want to take them away. Again, the biggest tax cuts in the history of our country, bigger than the Reagan tax cuts, they want to take them away. I will make your tax cuts permanent and give you additional tax cuts, and that's what we're doing. And to protect our overwhelming national security interests in a strong domestic farm industry, I will pass crucial tax cuts specifically for farmers so you can invest more land, more equipment, more farm products, all grown in the USA. And by that time, we'll be able to say the beautiful USA. And I will also effectively eliminate the estate tax on death tax. You know, when I got you the, I don't know if you know, yeah, a lot of you know it. But when I got you the biggest tax cuts in history included, and there was the uh, death tax or the estate tax uh, nullified on your farms. You can leave your farms to your kids, farms and businesses, small businesses. You can leave them to your children if you love your children. If you don't love your children, it doesn't matter. But if you, does, does anybody in the room not love their children? Yeah, well, this is Iowa, you love your children. I know a lot of places where there's a lot of dislove going on. But, uh, you know, when you pass away, you want your children to have your farms. People were losing their farms because they were being assessed and they were being charged massive taxes, death taxes, estate taxes. And they were losing the farms. The kids were going bankrupt all over the place. And I got rid of that. So now you can leave it. If you love your children, you can leave it to them. And if you don't love your children, it doesn't matter. Because there won't be, but there won't be a tax when you give it to your children. They won't, they won't have to go out to the bank and mortgage the farm and then possibly lose it. On day one, I will repeal Joe Biden's insane ethanol industry killing electric vehicle mandate. It's the craziest thing. Craziest thing I've ever heard. The craziest. Everything wants to be electric. You know, they want his, or just a quick little, they want army tanks now. We have the greatest tanks, the Sherman tanks. We have the greatest tanks in the world. We make them in Ohio. The greatest tanks in the world, they want to make them electric. Now, there's two problems. Number one, the battery is so big, you'd have to have a truck behind it. So is this going? So think of it, what they want to do. They want to make tanks electric, and they really don't have the proper type of power. There's a different kind of power. They don't have the same power. So they want to have in a tank so that you go in and you obliterate something, but you do it in an environmentally friendly way. <laughs> You're going in, we're knocking, look at that tank, it's shooting everything, there's stuff all over the place, everything is going, getting blown up, but we've done it in environmentally in a very friendly way. Now, these people are crazy. They came to me when I was there. I ended it. Sir, we have a type of fuel that would be very good for our new fighter jets. I said, oh, good. Will it have any impact on them? Yes, sir. It'll make them 15 percent less efficient. But we think we can make it up with technology. I said, supposing you left the same fuel and then you made them 15 percent. In other words, pick it both up. You pick up 30 percent. Sir, but we have a first thing. Can you imagine? So I rejected that when I said, we don't want to feel. Can you imagine? We had the greatest, we have the greatest planes in the world, all of this stuff. They want to make it less efficient. And that's the same thing. We want to go over enemy territory in a environmentally friendly way. These people are crazy. One of the worst is the trucking industry. I mean, the cars forget. Look, the cars, you know what? I'm all for electric cars, but you know, I'm for if you want to go short distance. If you have to go, like, let's take a ride to, let's drive from Iowa to New Hampshire to see how Trump does the following week in New Hampshire. And on your ninth stop to charge it when you can't find the electric charge out. You know, there's a little joke. It says, uh, the happiest day for a person in an electric car is the first 10 minutes after they get the charge. After that, they become a scrambled bunch of maniacs that say, where do we get the next charge? 
The first 10 minutes are wonderful. The next 50 minutes, they're saying, where do we go? No, I think electric cars are good. They'll have a problem. They're too expensive, and they don't go far. You know, somebody would say, oh, that's not a very nice, they don't go far. But what's more descriptive? They don't go far. <laughs> they take a long time to charge also. It's not like, you know, fill it up, boom, two seconds later. Uh, no, no, we can't do that. And uh, you should have the right to buy an electric car. I think they're terrific. You know, they're good. But you also have to have the right to buy gasoline-run cars and, and hybrids, which are good. Hybrids are good. They're not going to give you any of these options. What it's going to do is it's going to make you become home people because you're never going to be able to drive very far from your home. It's crazy. But here's the craziest of all, the trucking industry. So I meet with the truckers, and they love Trump. They love Trump because Trump's going to let them stay in business. And these guys have hundreds of trucks. These are the biggest guys. They say, sir, they're going to destroy the whole chain. I said, they've already done that, the supply chain. They've already done that. What's to destroy? They want trucks to become all electric, all electric. And here's the problem. So you go out and buy a big Peterbilt. They're good trucks, right? And others, they're good trucks. Peterbilt's great. They're all great. You go out and buy. So a truck, a good big truck, biggest taller, can go 2,000 miles, big one, good one, maximum, 2,000 miles. An electric one goes about 300 miles. You got a problem there. So you're going to have to stop six or seven times to make up the difference. What's that going to do to our supply chain? The other thing is it has a different kind of power. Electric's powerful, but it's a different kind of power. It's not as good a power at all. And the head of one of the biggest companies in the world in truckers, he's devastated. He said, you know, sir, for 50 years I've been buying trucks, big company. He's got hundreds of these things. He said, and every year they get a little better, a little better, they get stronger, faster. They're just, it's amazing that what they've done. And now in one day, they're going to set us back 50 years. We'll go back to where we were 50 or 60 years ago. They're going to destroy our industry. And there's no talking to these maniacs. You know, you explain it. There's not a person in this room who, after just that short little synopsis, uh, would say, well, let's give electric a shot. They, you could tell this to the people in Washington, and it would have no impact on them. they say, we don't care, we're going all electric. And by the way, you can't get rid of the batteries because you can't put them in the earth. They say it destroys the earth. <laughs> They're made in China because China has the material. See, we have gasoline. They don't want us to use the gasoline. They want us to use something that we won't be able to get. It's so crazy when you hear these stories, and, and they just, they're unyielding. They don't want to stop. Under a Trump administration, gasoline-fired engines will be allowed, but child sexual mutilation will be not allowed. <laughs> will not be allowed. Can you imagine you're a politician 10 or 15 years ago and you're saying, we will not allow you to sexually mutilate our children? Could you imagine that's actually a campaign talking point? I mean, what's going on? No, think, it's evil, it's sick. No, but, but you're a politician and you say, we will not allow them to sexually mutilate your children. Can you imagine you have to make that statement? It's like, it's like, Men playing in women's sports. Can you imagine? I come up here. It's one of the most popular things I say. I will not allow men to participate in women's sports. The place goes crazy all the time, right? They go crazy. But can you imagine saying it? The weightlifter lifted like 160 pounds more. 160 pounds broke the record. For 18 years, the record stood They'd put a quarter of an ounce on one side of the big barbell, quarter of an ounce on the other side. A young woman would get up, and she's so proud. Her father's in the front row, right where you are, right where you are, with a very beautiful blonde hair. Right where I'd like to have that color, blonde hair. <laughs> and you got the parents, the sisters, everyone's there, so proud. This young girl, she's a weightlifter, she's a champion. They have a quarter of an ounce and a quarter of an ounce. She grabs it. Mom, I'm going to make you so proud, Mom. She's watching her. And then she gets down. Uh, 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 uh. And they're proud. They're clapping. They're going crazy. Uh, I can't do it, Mom. I can't. Mom doesn't do it. Then a guy comes up who transitioned. 
Have you lifted before, they ask. No, uh, not really. Oh, you've never lifted? No. Oh, well, okay, good luck. So he takes the barber. Bing, bong. <laughs> they end up putting 150 pounds more on it. He does it. It's going to be hard. Or the swimmers. How about the swimming records? Young lady, you've heard this. What, should I do this one or not? Because, you know, our first lady hates it when I do it. She, she says, darling, I love you so much, but this is not presidential when you do the weightlifting. This is not presidential. Or when you do the swimming thing, it's not, you know, and I understand. Or when you dance off the stage, she said, sir. No, she said, darling, I love you. I love you, but this is not presidential. You don't dance off the stage. I say, look, look. We got a year to go. Everybody loves us. I love everybody. The country's going to hell in a handbasket. Let's do a little dancing. But an attorney general, technically, she's probably right. But what the hell? But the swimmer is uh, an even greater case. You have a young lady. These are true stories. You have a young lady, and she's great swimmer, and you know, all the talents of like golfers, baseball players, but sort of, you know, when they're six, they're better than the other kids that are six, right? You know, they're just, it's a special group. And so you end up like in a pyramid, and these are great college swimmers. And she's been swimming against the same people for a long time because she's swimming at a top level, so she looks left and she recognizes everybody. And she looks right and she recognizes everybody, but this guy is right over here, he transitioned. And he's like a giant. She's like, who? Who is that? Holy mackerel. He has a wingspan slightly larger than Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain. You know who that is. Wilt the Stilt was fairly large with the wingspan, like a nine-foot wingspan. This guy was a little bit larger. Okay. So he's there. Now she's a little worried because she wants to break the record. And she doesn't want to be embarrassed because her parents are there. Everybody's there. Then they go, ready, set, beautiful, surround, Go. And they all jump in, and as you know, she got very badly injured that day, right? You know that, right? Horribly, horribly injured. Wind burn. He went by her so fast <laughs> that she was terribly burned. They took her to the hospital. And she will be okay, but she got horrible wind burn. And I think he broke the record by like 28 seconds or some ridiculous number. No, this is crazy. And you know, it's very demeaning to women, the women. And the amazing thing is the women on the teams all know this, and they're all afraid to speak up. Not all. There's a couple that do. But mostly they're afraid to speak up. They don't think it's appropriate to speak up. Uh, but it's not going to matter because we're going to end that so fast. It's, we're going to end that so fast. You know, like, I'm not a big, I told this yesterday, I said, I'm not a big LeBron James fan. I'm just not. I'm sorry. But he's a great basketball player. But I'd go to him and I'd say, I want to be a basketball coach. I'll be better than the great John Wooden. I'd say, LeBron, uh, would you like to transition? Because I'd like to start a team. And I'll get you and I'll get five or six other guys and... If you all transition, we are the greatest team in the history of basketball. You'll be playing at 80 years old. You won't even have to take a break. And I will become the greatest coach in all of history. I will go for 30 years without a loss. And my players will average in age about 60. And that's what I want to do. But no, it's so ridiculous, isn't it, though? It's so ridiculous that they can be doing this. And they talk about it so seriously. And then you watch some of these Democrats get up and they try and justify it. There's no justification. And it's very, very demeaning to women. So we're going to end that very quickly. Very, very quickly. I will also sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content on our children. You know, I have to say, so remember, Ben, when LeBron James endorsed Hillary? Now, Hillary is small. She's small. Le LeBron is not small. And they stood on the stage, and Hillary came slightly below his belt. I said, that's the greatest endorsement I've ever seen. This was, 
This was not a good endorsement. This was not good. This was not good. Now let's get back to our subject at hand. That was a good day. I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. And just as I did for four years, I will fully uphold, Ben was talking about it before, our Second Amendment, as I've done through thick and thin. Right, fellas? We did it, 100 percent. It's not easy. It is under siege. You do know that. It's under siege. It's not easy to do. It's under siege, but we have to protect. We have to protect ourselves. I will continue to protect innocent life. Look what we did with the Supreme Court. Look what we did. We will restore free speech, and I will secure our elections like they've never been secured before. Once we're in power, we can do that. And our goal will be, as I said, one day voting with paper ballots and voter ID. Very simple. We don't want to have, we don't want to have elections that go for 63 days. Why are those, why are those votes being moved? You ever see with the wheelbarrows? They have wheelbarrows, they're moving and dumping them. You're saying, who the hell, what's going on? But until then, Republicans have to win. We have to win. And then we're going to change that whole system so that we have honest elections. And in conclusion, this is what we must do to restore our country to greatness. The USA is a mess. Israel is under attack. Our economy is cratering. It's cratering. Inflation is out of control. China, Russia, Iran, North Korea have formed together as a menacing and destructive coalition. Very destructive. Our currency is crashing and soon will no longer be the world standard, I'm afraid to tell you that, which will be our greatest defeat in 200 years. If we lose the standard, we are in a much different place. But I won't let it happened. None of it will ever happen. There's not even a chance. Just like Russia would have never invaded Ukraine and China would not even be having a thought about raiding Taiwan. They never did. Remember, for four years, they never did. Nobody talked about raiding Taiwan or going in and having a war with Ukraine. And we would have left Afghanistan with dignity and strength instead of the greatest embarrassment in the history of our country. I believe it was the greatest embarrassment in history. If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as crooked Joe Biden and the Biden administration has done. I mean that. Remember, I used to say, a month ago, I was saying, if you took the five worst, and somebody came up to me and said, sir, I think it could actually go more than that. I said, you know, I never thought of it. Let's go. If you took the 10 worst presidents, this guy's done more destruction to our country than the 10 of them. We're a failing nation. We are a nation in decline. And now these radical left lunatics want to interfere with our elections by using law enforcement. It's totally corrupt, and we will never let it happen. If you want to save America from crooked Joe Biden and the radical left, and they are evil, then get every patriot you know, make sure they are registered Republicans, and get them out to vote in their local precinct caucuses at 7 p.m. on Monday, January 15th. It's Martin Luther King Day. Good day. Martin Luther King. January 15th. That's when it all begins. And I kept you first. Remember that nobody else, nobody else, other people like to claim it around here. Brad will tell you better than anybody. Brad, I kept you first. Nobody else. It was up to me. And they wanted to move Iowa back, back in the line. And, you know, I happen to think you have an incredible political pedigree. It's really an incredible pedigree, a beautiful pedigree, and we're keeping it the way it was for as long as I have anything to say, and hopefully that's going to be for a long time. I was going to be first, and I kept, in terms of primary, you're the caucus, in terms of primary, I kept the order that we had for so many years because they wanted to move New Hampshire too, and I didn't do that. I kept that. It's the first primary. Then we go to South Carolina. We kept it. 
But the Democrats changed everything around. They took you out of position. They took a lot of things, a lot of liberties, and I think you're going to remember that. But we're going to win against them anyway, whether they did that or not, especially here. But we kept you where you are. But we're asking you to commit to caucus for us and to bring as many people as you can to caucus for the campaign and to sign up if you're ready. It's ia.donaldjtrump.com to get involved. If you can do that, you'll have a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have a big, a big victory because 2024 is our final battle. And with you at my side, we're doing this together. We will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers and fools from our government. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists, Marxists, and fascists. And we will throw off the sick political class that hates our country so much. We will rout the fake news media. We will rout them. They have to come back and they have to be honest. They are doing so poorly. They have the lowest approval rating they've ever had. They have a lower approval rating than Congress. I'm proud to say that when I started, they had a very high, but we exposed it. But they have to come back and they have to be honest and they have to stop what they're doing. We will evict Joe Biden from the White House and we will finish the job that we started and we will do things that nobody thought were even possible. The great silent majority is rising like never before and under our leadership, the forgotten men and women, the men and women, the forgotten will be forgotten no longer. With your help, your love and your vote, we will put America first and we will very simply make America great again. So thank you very much, Iowa. I appreciate it. We'll be back many times and we're going to be uh, voting in a very short period of time. Thank you very much. We love you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you all.